When you dive into the world of overeating, you are most likely going to find someone talking about the primary driver behind overeating, which are emotions and mindset. We covered all of that good stuff in part one. In this part, we're going to cover the things that are outside of emotions and mindset that play a strong factor. Starting off with this crazy thing that food engineers do to keep you hooked on their snacks. It's called vanishing caloric density. Some foods have the ability to disappear in your mouth. You throw it in your mouth, take a couple bites, and it's basically gone. Let's break this down. In order to feel full, our stomach has something called mechanoreceptors. These are receptors in the stomach that respond to stretching of the stomach and it let us know when we're full. Some foods are great at making our stomach feel full. Some foods suck at it. Some foods are designed to suck at it, which is vanishing caloric density. We're talking about all the garbage food you walk into the gas station. Let me get 25 on five and you see that aisle of terrible snacks. Cheetos, Doritos, all those chips and candies, they're designed to keep us hooked. And the reason we can't just eat one Lay's potato chip is because our body isn't too convinced that we're getting much energy out of a food that melts in our mouth and barely makes a dent in the stomach. We can eat them forever. Never be ashamed of overeating. Some of us are just uninformed or well-informed and just don't care. But either way, there is blame to go around. These food industries aren't making it necessarily easier. Researchers performed a randomized controlled trial, the gold standard of scientific study. They evened out a group of folks. You folks eat ultra-processed meals as much as you want three times a day. You folks eat unprocessed meals three times a day as much as you want. They found that the folks who ate the ultra-processed meals were consuming 500 extra calories per day compared to the unprocessed group. Bruh, that means by the end of the week, these folks were eating 3,500 more calories than their counter group. Now, y'all know how much I can't stand calorie counting for weight loss, but when we're talking about sheer energy intake, the food we eat matters, makes a difference. Johnny, what exactly makes a food ultra processed? Unless you have a farm in your backyard, you know, uh, Minecraft style, then all the food you eat has a process to get to you. However, it is when the foods have a heavy process to even exist and then get to you. That is where the problems are. The authors of the study we mentioned took some photos of some of the ultra processed meals they had. No, you may not have thought a plain bagel was considered ultra processed. I certainly didn't, but one of the ways you can tell if a food is ultra processed is by looking at its ingredients list. If it's a gang of ingredients on there, it's probably whack. Five or more is a common benchmark, but this isn't even regarding the names of the actual ingredients. Like, what are they? If you're curious about some of the common ingredients that appear on our food labels, check out the McDonald's ingredient by ingredient I did. I basically broke down the Big Mac and it has a lot of ingredients that it's shared in all of our junk food and you'll get an idea of what some of that stuff is check that out that series will make buying food much easier in part one we mentioned the ultimate question am I eating with my body or my mind ultimately we want to get to a point when we're eating with our body eating when we're hungry and stopping when we're full. One of the best ways I found to kind of gain that ability of listening to the body is in the morning because a lot of times we wake up and of course it's kind of routine for us to eat breakfast, but a lot of the times we aren't even hungry. This is gonna sound super simple, but actually try this. Wake up and don't eat. Feel hungry and then eat. It's gonna help you if you do this for days, weeks, months, you're gonna find out that you are really in tune with your hunger signal. And just because we might go through the whole morning without eating doesn't mean we have to have some kind of giant breakfast when we finally do eat. Keep in mind, when the stomach is empty, it's only about the size of your fist, and it's not gonna take a lot to feel that. Hunger is one of the quickest feelings to leave as soon as you start eating, because like I said, it doesn't take a lot to fill that stomach. What's cool about eating small meals is that the return of hunger will come quicker. That means you get to practice a little bit more of how to listen to your body and you're gonna get really good at it and some foods don't fill the stomach as well as other foods like I mentioned earlier so you'll be able to learn for yourself which foods make you feel full longer than others and no I'm not saying starve yourself and be miserable and and only eat a little bit of no I'm not going there I'm saying that we only get one body and it'll be best for us to get in tune with it through that practice of understanding which foods do this do that how do we actually feel when we're hungry so on and so on it's gonna help you immensely combine that with the mental aspect of getting at the root of why you may turn to food and you're unstoppable on your way out leave a like for the community please and add to the discussion in the comments I'm gonna get up out your way maybe you can do it take your time do it right let's do it baby Maybe you can do it take your time right